the things that makes you happy? Do you have choices? Do you know the things you can sacrifice for the things you can't? So you see, before you say you want to be in a relationship, if you don't know these things, you can't go into marriage. That is the reason why many people are divorcing today because they thought they love those people. They thought, I thought I love him. I thought I love the lady. And there are some people, they know too much. Such people, they collapse in marriage. In marriage, we learn every day. So I ask you this question again. Do you know who you are? As a woman, you, you mentioned your name. I don't know if you might. Can you be on your feet for me? Do you know who you are? Yeah. Who are you? Um, I know. <laughs> For that, everybody knows. Everyone here is a human being. Who are you? Okay, so, so I'm switching from the Christian perspective. Okay. I am an enemy of God, so I'll call myself God. So do you know God? What do you know about God? I know he is um, Jesus Christ. Okay. Okay. Created everything. Do you know the things that makes God God? Do you know the weights of God? So if you say you are God, then who are you? You are confusing yourself. Thank you. The fact is that if I tell you I love you, and within two years there's an issue with you, and I can't stay, then my love has got a question mark. If I see you today and I say, because you have got shape, I think I love women with breasts. Most men say it. I, I love a woman with breasts, with backside and all that. So the woman I saw, that lady, she's the type of woman I want. If the lady doesn't go to check the background and will just marry you because she met you on campus and you were slim and very handsome. She had made the biggest mistake. When I married, I was very slim. Very, very slim. But when I gave birth, first one, I was, this one, I'm okay. I was worse. Second one, worse. Third one, I don't have a word for it. There are some men, they can take that from you. You need to do everything to lose weight. If you are not careful, that man will bring who you are down, whether it's worth emotionally. Listen. Don't let any guy tell you, if you love me, show me by giving me sex. It's a lie. Oh, yes. It's a lie. Are you listening? When you read the Ephesians chapter 5, it tells who a woman is. And most of the time, most educated women will fight this. They don't want to submit to the man. I will not submit to him. He, we, we need to share equal. Let me say, so if you're a woman here, listen, you are never like a woman, a man. No woman should tell equal right. There's nothing like equal right. You are a woman, he's a man. Don't clap yet. Yours is coming. Most educated women have an issue of submitting. In the case where the man's salary is less and she earns higher, then when you go to that house, the woman takes over. And some of the women want to, you know, I also have, I also have a brain. I need to also tell you what we have to do. It's two ways together. Yes, it's two people working it out together. But you should bear in mind the man is the head of the home. The Bible said in Ephesians chapter 5, it said that the woman should reverence the man as she would reverence God. Listen. Listen. No matter who I am, let me tell you a little about me and my background. I am much educated than my husband. My husband just finished JSS, even in the village, you not SS. Oh, yes, I want you to understand something. Where I am coming from, he picked me. When he picked me, I was back on campus, he said, Kumasi. 
And then the, uh, we got introduced. Somebody told me, one pastor told me about him. And I was asking, who is that man that wants to marry me? And when they mentioned his name, I was so annoyed and so angry. Because I don't know why he, he, he feels he has the right to come to me because of my level. Most of the women here, you are like that. So it took me like a year. When he calls me, I pick the phone and I put it right where the TV is for him to talk to the TV. I don't want to talk to him. But this man never gave up on me. He would send me money and I wouldn't even say thank you. He would send me credit and I wouldn't say thank you because I, I think he's below my level. Or oh, listen, listen. Then all those that were my level, nothing happened. My level men, who have got money, have got cars, who have got everything that I can work with them to show my friends that this is my man, to prove to everybody I've got the right man. One day after a year that I got to know him, one day, I slept and I saw something. And the moment I got up, I called him and I said, I want to marry you. Listen, it wasn't easy. I don't know what happened, but I called and I said, I want to marry you. We got married, but it was hell. Do you know why? I didn't see the reason why I should submit to somebody I am higher than. I can speak English. I can write. And I can do everything. It doesn't even get close to it. But he was a man of God. I never considered that. I still didn't respect it. Let me tell you, every woman listening to me, use me as your own example. But thank God I'm still in my marriage because if I didn't get the right man, he would have pushed me out. I should be out by now because I don't deserve him. Because I was rude, disrespectful. Every angle that you can take it, that was me. Because I allowed the society to tell me who I was as a woman without allowing God to tell me my position as a woman in the home. Then later, I realized we are not working together. I packed my things. I said, I want to go. I won't marry again. If I tell you how many times I've packed out of my marriage, I can't count. It's too much. It's uncountable. I've been married for 11 years. We are getting to 12 years. I have three kids with them. But in the beginning, when I had my first child, I said, I'm not coming back. I don't want this marriage. Because he had nothing. He had no money. He was, he was so down. He, he was sleeping in a, one uncom uncompleted, in a, somebody's bush. With no toilets, nothing. But when he came to campus where I was staying, he came, I had my own singing room, self-contained, everything. With my bath, with my heater in the bath. You could just imagine. And coming to him with nothing. So when I was coming, I came with my TV. Because he didn't have TV. Oh, he didn't have a bed. A wooden bed. It was a mattress we sleep on the floor. I don't know why I married that man in the beginning. No, I don't know what God did anyway, but I thank God for my life. So one year when I married, none of my family knew my house because you can't, there's no seat for you. Oh yeah, there was no chair. And my mother cannot see where I'm staying with all that they've spent on me. You understand what I'm trying to say? So one year when they call me, I say, oh, we are busy. I'm going to preach. I'm going to... It's a lie. I can't let them come in. It's too bad. So after a year, I delivered my baby. And thank God a miracle happened. I don't know how it happened, but it happened. That at my eight months, a common thief didn't have mercy on us and entered our home. That single room with no gate. It was a miracle God did for us and took my phone because I was thinking if I give birth, where will my mother come to? But God has his own way. That day was 14 February. And the Monday I was coming from the hospital, one of my friends called and said, hey, you said you have there? I said, yes. He said, okay, let your boys meet me. I have some arrows for you. That money was what they used to buy my first fridge in my marital home. So the day I was coming home, my fridge was following me to my home. So when I got home, my fridge was there. Then my husband went to pick my mom to come. My mother came and said, wow, you have a beautiful house like this. And you don't allow anybody to come. I was saying to my, my mother, you have no idea. 
So some of you, that anything you tell your mommy, mommy, look what my husband is doing, you are the biggest mistake. Stop it. You don't need that. If you are matured, you don't do that. And none of my family had anything in my marriage. But let me tell you later what happened. Later, after my baby, I still had a struggle because I couldn't submit. I couldn't humble. Anything he says, I need to shout him. I, sometimes I feel like letting him beat me so that I can report him and leave the marriage. Anything I do, he wouldn't touch me. But I would, I would beat him. I would, I would do anything I have to. I was so rude. Bad. But this man has got a heart. I don't know where he got it from. I don't know why he still wanted me because I park, he'll come and pick me up. I park, he'll come and pick me up. Park, I park. I can't count it. But my last one I parked, I had, I had all my babies. My, my, my boy was very, very young. It was like five months or six, but I still wanted to end the marriage. Then they were talking. Everybody was talking. They were talking. They were talking. They were talking. And my mother asked me, what is happening? I said, I don't want the marriage. My husband said, no, I didn't come here to divorce. I came here for you people to straighten her up. I told my father, I don't want it. You should go, let me go. My father told me something, and that is what I hold on to up to now. He said, you know what? In my family, we have a limitation, and that is marriage. The women are so beautiful, but their temper is too high. They don't know how to maintain men. They marry, and they come back with their kids. And my father told me, I am praying for you. You have to break that limitation. You have to break it because I have a conviction that you are the one that will break it. Out of that, my father said, I packed back with my husband. I told myself, I'm not going back to my father's house again. But it wasn't easy. Then one day I asked God, what do I do? Because the, the Lord told me one thing, learn how to shut up when he's talking. Learn how to give him all that respect. If you respect me as your God, shut up and let him be the man. It wasn't easy. The first day he sat with me and he wanted to talk to me, I was holding my chair and I was telling God, help me to not answer this man. Because whatever he's saying is getting me too annoyed. I want, to, I want to respond to him. Father, help me out. So whilst he was talking, I was tapping my feet. When he finished, I said, are you done, my dear? He said, yeah. I said, thank you. Can I get up? He said, you said, I said, can I get? He said, don't you have anything to say? I said, my dear, you are the head. Whatever you say, I will do it. My husband looked at my face and was like. And then I got up. When I entered my room, I shut it up and I shouted out of anger. I said, Father, this one, I can't take it. I want you to understand when, when we talk of respect. Every man deserves respect. And it took me days, months to grow in maturity and humility. And then it got to a point when he talks, I don't talk. I said, you do what we have to do. I support you. He got to a point. He told me, mommy, um, I want to hear what you have to say. I said, my, my dear, I don't have anything to say. I respect whatever you say and I believe in you. Let's do it. Then he said, is she fine? Or is she planning something? Because it's not me. For all my eight years in the marriage, it was hell. Hell. Because I thought he's not capable. He, he's not a man for me. He's, I made the biggest mistake. But for these three years, I have been the best woman ever. Because that man waited for me. That man didn't just love me. It was more than love. He had the Christ heart like heart, to stand my stupidity, to stand my faults, my weakness, my mind, whatever you call it. Today, I don't know where my certificate is because I don't even need it. The man that I met that has only one room in somebody's bush, today my husband, has, we've got nine bedroom house. And in my area, it's one of the best ever. Nobody has got the house. He built it. The man from the village, JSS Lever, he has given me the house and my kids. My kids lack nothing. Today, any car I want my husband to buy for me, he's capable, he buys it, unless I don't ask. 
Today, when I travel with my husband and pick my kids with me, we go to Germany, we go everywhere. He has money to say, get, get my ATM card, do shopping for you and your kids. I don't need it. You do it. Today, I stand everywhere on TV, everywhere, and my husband sat back and said, that is my wife. And other men desire their wives to be like me, but they don't know where my husband went through. As I was coming here, I had to go to so many TV stations before coming here today. And everything, I planned everything. My dear, this one came. What do I do? Do I go? He said, let's choose. I'll choose this. Anything I do, if he doesn't say yes, I don't move. I did engineering, BT engineering, computer technology. I was the only girl in my class. You can see how strong and stubborn I could be because I'm from the ghettos. Where I come from, it's not that about area. I live with the we smokers. I live with the Zongo boys. So I'm a Zongo girl. So you can just know how strong-hearted I can be and very stubborn. But I got a man with no higher educational background, but with a higher spiritual background. And that helped me to be the kind of woman I am today. And I'm still going higher because I got a strong man supporting me. I asked you who you are because I didn't know who I was in my eight years of marriage. But when I found my place as a woman to submit and humble myself for that man, the best out of me has come. And that is why my team, I have my name called the real woman in me. Every woman you see is not a woman. There is something in them. Until you find it, that woman is not a woman. Don't look at their beauty. They are lying to you. Do you know why I don't do makeups? I don't need, I don't need to fake for anybody. I am real. You can do it, it's your choice. But my style of covenant with God is that I want the me that is inside to show more than what you see outside. What we see outside, it is not real, it's fake. Marry the young man today that says, I love you, oh, have you eaten today? And two years of the marriage, he doesn't care if you have eaten. When we get to that point, what do you do? Matthew 25, it says something. There were 10 virgins going to meet the bridegroom. Five took extra oil. Five didn't have oil. Do you have extra? In this journey of relationship, you don't have extra, you can, you can go. Because whilst you're waiting for the bridegroom, it will tarry. It will delay. The, the womb, your baby will not come. The man business will collapse. It may be he has got PhD degree. Anything can happen in the marriage. It's a journey. Nobody knows how it will end. You have extra. Or will you listen to your friends? As I was coming, somebody called and said, Mommy, I, I don't know, but I want to cheat on my husband because he's not being faithful. He doesn't sleep with me for almost a month. He has not touched me. And Mommy, I, I feel I have to cheat because I can't tell I'm a human. I said, Are you sure? You know, he got the point in my marriage for two years. Me and my husband we never had sex. What? Do you know why? We had issues. We had issues that were beyond what we see. We had medical issues, so there was nothing like sex. Should I have picked another man to cheat on because I have issues with my husband? We had issues. So two solid years, there was nothing like sex, but we were together. Oh, yeah. It can happen because when men get to some level in their lives, let me tell you this, the reality is that a man gets to a level in his life that the performance goes down. Sometimes it doesn't even erect. No, it doesn't work. When you're too stressed, when you hit, you hit 40, they're going too stressed and so many issues. I'm telling you, your, your drive for sex goes up. That is when the women also get to their peak of having sex. How will you deal with it? So if you tell me one month your husband has not touched you and you are human, then I'm, I'm surprised. Am I, am I a wood? Then me there, I'm already dead. For two years, uh, then I'm, I'm a dead being. See beyond the things the world is telling you. They tell you, get a man who's already married, has got a car, at least he's got a PhD, he has got that degree, at least he's, he's already made. I don't, I don't dispute that. It's beautiful. But let me tell you, you can marry the man that is a banker today. After your marriage, he's gone. What do you do? Do you leave him? Don't marry a man because he's working. Marry a man because he has got vision. Don't marry a man because he's made already. He has a car. Car. Corolla. That two years to come, there'll be better things, higher than the Corolla you see today. Corolla X. 
Listen. Some of you see the man and you choose. Someone tells mommy, I don't know which one to choose because um, this one is a little bit okay, well to do, but this one. Uh, what did we move? The moment you say, woman say, it means the man is not having money. But let me tell you this. If you look at that, it means good to get a man who is okay, vision and everything, who has a little to start with, it is good. I don't dispute that. But sometimes there are some people where you see that they are blessing with these guys. You see them, they don't look the way you want them. Give them time. You will enjoy them. Give them time. That's why I keep on asking, do you know who you are? Or do you do things because your friends are doing it? The guy you are even going out with now, do you know who the guy is? Or you just tell me, mommy, I love him. He calls me and he checks on me. He gives me money sometimes. He buys credit. Um, it's okay. The father is uh, the minister for that. Oh, mercy. If that is the way you choose a man, you made the biggest mistake. You don't marry the father, you marry the guy. Somebody says, oh, his father is the archbishop. You make the biggest mistake. Archbishop has got a character. Go and tell the wife. Go and ask the wife at home. You see him preaching there, but go home and see what is happening. If you don't check where your man is coming from, check the history and the background of that man. There are so many surprises in marriage. So many Do you know why you sleep with Ajua? You leave, you sleep with Kofi, you leave because you don't know who you are. If you know who you are, the moment you met Kofi, if Kofi is the one, you know Kofi is the one, you do everything to stay with that person. But you fall in love today, you fall out tomorrow. Why do you say I love him and tomorrow you don't love him again? What kind of love is that? I want to know the kind of love we're talking about. Is it just a talking love? Or the, somebody said, Mommy, I want to see my few butterflies. How do you feel butterflies? <laughs> this English word is killing us. English. Bro, for some English, you know. Mommy, I, I don't know, but the moment I say, How do you feel butterfly? The butterfly does it feel in your tummy. How does it feel? But I said, Mommy, the moment I say, my, I feel like it melting. It, there's something, goose, spawns, it goes around me. You. you Any person you see that you can't control yourself, you don't love the person. Oh, get it clear with me. Get it clear with me. Be careful how you see somebody and say, I love him. Mommy, I don't know. I can't sleep without him. I don't know. I, uh, if he doesn't call. Somebody said, Mommy, my boyfriend said he doesn't want me again, but I'm dying. I can't sleep. I don't know what to do. Somebody said he doesn't love you. You are dying. <laughs> because they say love is blind. Who said it? Love is blind, so you can't see, you can't feel, you can't smell. This one, what he's telling you, he doesn't love you. You say love is blind. So he's more treating you, he said, oh mommy, I love him. And he will tell you I am busy. But you see him always online, but he's busy. He said, mommy, you know, He'll be fine. We'll be fine. So we time. Oh, you'll be fine. Oh, be very, very fine. You know, don't jeopardize your future in the name of I love him. Marriage is more than love. There is more to marriage than the love you think you have. There is more to it. I want to ask this question. What things do you look up to? If you want a woman, I want the men to answer me. What are the things you consider if you want to pick a woman as your wife? Yes, my dear. Oh, let, let him speak. He's saying something. Hard working. So if, if she sells charcoal, it's hard working. Go ahead with it. Hard working, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, the outer one came before the inner. Because you are considering what I'm saying. I ring them. Okay, good. It's okay. Go, you continue. You want all this in the woman. 
the outer beauty, the inner beauty, the shape, hey, you know, that's outer beauty, huh? Okay. So let me ask you this. Should in case you get the shape you want, and then two years of the marriage, you know, when women would deliver her babies, issues can come. The shape goes off, or she gets sick and something happens. What do you do? The outer beauty is gone. This one is left with inner beauty. What do you do? Is it, do I? Uh -huh. That is what I'm trying to say. So why would you, why are you saying this? It takes more than love to be with somebody. So you have to overlook some things. You know, there are some people when they come your way, they don't have the shape, but they've got everything. It looks as if we click, but Charlie, the, the shape is not dead. It's not what I want, but something within her and me, we click. But because of the shape, uh, What do you do when it comes to when it comes to that state? What do you do? What do you do, my dear? That one you are not sure, eh? Okay, give the mic to the guy for me, the one there. My dear, you can talk. Talk. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. Clap your hands, this guy for me. Because a woman who has got shape and doesn't have the character, you are in trouble. Some women are hard working, but they are controlling. <laughs> what do you do? So that is why he says something. You look for his strength, her weakness. You know? There's more to it. If her weakness is that she's rude, and a little thing, she flips up. How do you handle a woman like that? No so knock. Uh, who is here? Somebody was talking. So you, you want the, uh, my dear, watch me. Is, is it, okay, give the mic to the guy up there. Is, that, is it the type of lady you want? Because the way you're watching her, Yes, my dear, go ahead. Is that what? SBS. SRS. Beautiful. You come on. Do you have a girlfriend? Does she have all that you are asking for? So let me 20. Okay. How do you work the 20 out? <laughs> of course. Yes. Okay. Very well. I said they respect you very well. They will say yes, yes. Let marry them and you will see. You see, the ring has got power. Ring. Okay. So, you want a woman who can cook and all that? I think sometimes you have to use wisdom to find out. What wisdom? Because when you want to like, be with her normally, you won't find out. You will hide it from you. So maybe you can try setting something like a trap. It's like a kid, sounds like a kid, to find out. Listen, 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 listen. Uh, hello. Don't, don't you ever do that to any, any of your girlfriends. It's not healthy. Are you listening? Set the trap and she will fall inside. Why do you want to set a trap for her? One thing you should know is that marriage, marriage takes a lot. There are things you will see, there are things you will experience. Don't expect to see all those things when you're in a relationship with them. Don't. But expect more when you marry them. Expect so many things that will happen in the marriage when you, when you marry them. But you need to get extra to be able to handle it when it gets to that point. Because you meet somebody today, he doesn't, she doesn't look like somebody who is a lazy person. You are in campus together, she goes try to do everything. But when you marry them, the first child will come and everything, everything gets destroyed. 
The moment, you know, when a woman gets pregnant, things change. She changes from herself to something else. Sometimes she becomes lazy, she, can't, she doesn't want to bath, she doesn't want to do this and all that. Because most of the marriages I'm talking about, laziness is killing the marriage. One man said, Mommy, seven years of my marriage, I sleep at the hall on mattress. So then, matter because I've left the bed for my wife, because on the bed, clothes, so many things down. There's no place for me to sleep, and the woman doesn't care. Do you know why? They have three kids. She has to make sure they eat, she will wash, she will clean, she will do everything and everything. The man is complaining while she is not doing anything to help the woman. How can she be cooking? She will run to go and bring the things from the dry land. In the, in the name of trying to fold it, one child is crying. She leaves on the bed and she wants to take off the child. Make sure your fufu is ready before you come. You sit down and you eat. And you still say she's lazy.